Afternoon guys. I just want to go over the cost of living with Spain again because somebody did bring up nah that's not right according to uh, some information that they got from a uh, website. Um, first thing I want to say is when I say Spain I'm talking about where I am. I do not talk about the broader sense. Um, quite simply it's a bit like saying living in the UK in the sense that if you live in, in a London the biggest killer is going to be rent or property ownership, yet I do find the food can be cheaper in London. In the same way, if you live in the uh, outer skirts of Wales, up in the mountains somewhere, your cost of living is pretty low, but obviously there is pretty much no jobs there either. So when I talk about Spain, I'm talking about physically, mainly on the coast. Um, Torreca is one of the poorest cities in Spain. One of the things that the mayor that's, I believe, is still currently in jail, um, introduced was he was giving people 3,000 euros to register as being a resident. The reason they do this is they get more money from central government. Um, and as such, there must have been a stimulus around that that injected a load of cash flow. Um, but I would also say that you're looking at about two-thirds of the population is not here all year round. That's why when I look out the window, you see a lot of holiday properties. It's horrendous. They're out of, you know, they're out of control, I think that's the easiest way to put it. They've been construction, constructing them all over the place and continue to do so. A lot of the licensing is expiring based on the land. Uh, one of the other things that former mayor did also is allocate that anywhere could pretty much be built on which is also one of the issues he's got with his court case um, relating to a, um, a spa that was built on a nature reserve. Um, that's, that's one of the things I've read. Um, now I'm not sure if he's serving a three-year sentence for that or not, I can't remember. But the point being is he allowed people to build wherever they liked. Um, now, the thing with that is, is you've got a large population I would say over 50% of the population here are pensioners. I would say 50% of the population is under a thousand euros a month. Why? Because if you work here, they're predominantly in seasonal work, restaurants, tourism operated jobs. Um, a lot of the people are around seven or 800 euros a month. They're not 2,000, 3,000 euros a month. Uh, pensioners are the same. A lot of the UK pensioners here with limited budgets settled here. So they, they bought a small place in the sun. Um, there was a TV show in the UK that actually promoted Torrebecca because they used to give away apartments here as a prize. Um, as such, it encouraged people to move here from the UK. You can buy property from as little as 19,000 euros um, which you, which will be a one bedroom studio apartment but if you get one of these little bungalow ones you can construct up to four stories high um, don't quote me on that because I'm not uh, tied with the building regulations but you can at least go up another floor um, the reason I say four a lot of the stuff is developed here low rise low rise has a limited amount of floors and I assume They'll be limited to about four floor, floor, four stories high in most cases. Um, so the the job prospects are minimal. The pay is abysmal. The cost of living here is relatively cheap. A lot of the area is adapted for it. If you go down to the coastal area, like what I'm talking about, is go to the marinas, go to the the beachfront, whatever. You're obviously going to pay a bigger price. If you go into some of what I call the uh, Brit towns, you'll find there is places you can get a decent meal for six euros instead of 12 or 15, you know, because it adapts to market value. Um, cost of living here is relatively cheap because it's market dictated. Income is low. There is no real factories or anything around here. What you have is dodgy mechanics, um, a lot of people relying on the building industry, the maintenance industry, a lot of people relying on civil servant jobs, and this is where you get the stats 
the, these surveys put together, if you look at the criteria of the jobs they put together, what they focus on is nurses, doctors, teachers, you know, people all work for the government pretty much in some form because their wages are all set and normally on scales which are very easy to pull that information while then going out and looking for it. Reality is the majority of people black market, self-employed, self-employed and having a huge um, excessive social security payment. The social security payment I think is about 220 euros or something a month once you get out of a certain period. Um, which I find is excessive. I mean, a lot of people do not earn that through the winter. You know, at the end of the day, they make all the money in the months, in the summer months. Um, this is why there's a thriving black market economy. They also do it to teachers. Uh, schools will actually have, like English teachers, etc., self-employed, so that they can lay them off during the holiday period, so they don't have to pay them. There's a lot of third, third, um, third book accounting. Uh, basically what you have is your book for the accountant, the real book, and the books that um, the tax man sends. Um, they're skewed. People get pay slips and some cash in hand to avoid paying excess tax and social security payments. It's normal in Spain. <coughs> and I'm sure some people say, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, oh, I do. <laughs> I do see all the time. When you put a car in for repair, you'll get people ask you, do you, do you want to receive? Because I'll have to charge an extra 20%. What they really mean is they've already added the 20% for themselves and actually trying to uh, skim off the top another 20%. That's pretty normal here. Um, they don't like giving out the receipts. And a lot of the people that potter around doing work won't give you a receipt. If it has got a receipt, it doesn't have an address, doesn't have a business name, tax number, um, all stuff that's actually required as self-employed, but a lot of people do not do it. Um, so the figures are miles off for Torrebeca. Now, if you look at places like Barcelona, Madrid, um, Valencia, they're going to have a higher pay because they've got a higher cost of living, but also um, it's where the majority of people are heading for work. This is why you're finding villages disappear in Spain, because the population is aging, because the younger members have moved to the cities. So you may have hubs of high activity, like central London, where you get a high rate of pay there, but at the same time, around it is much, much lower, and that's the reality of it. So I would say Torrebeca is relatively cheap to live. And I would say it, well, it definitely cost me about the same here as it does in the Philippines. What's different though is we have a lot more facilities. Waste collection is at least three times a week, if not every day during the summer months. Um, road infrastructure is good. Um, police presence is good. Um, variety of restaurants, food, access, etc. is very good. Um, internet. <laughs> internet. I'm sure if I moved up to one of the locations that have fibre, I wouldn't have as many problems as I do with the internet. But I'm right outside one of the major supermarkets where we live at the moment and it still has cable issues. Although they have started installing it in the last six months in this area as well. So it is improving. One of the things you get though is infrastructure doesn't develop naturally, should I say, because if you know, if for example, well, realistically, the majority of the houses out here are summer homes. Are they going to need fiber optic all year round? No. So are they going to be in a rush to put fiber optic in them when people want will need a 12 month contract? No. Um, so as such, these things hinder the development. So there is sort of an illusion going on here. Because if you lived in a village, you'd recognise it straight away. The young got fine because the population is low. But in this case, you've got scattered population that isn't here all year round. So it does make infrastructure development a little bit slower. Um, but at the same time, they're getting there. Torrebecca has one of the best hospitals in the world. Don't have to take my word for it, just Google it. Um, there's very, very little downside to here. The hard bits are bureaucracy, dealing with the paperwork. You get through the paperwork, you're fine. 
If you need to work here, you're going to find that quite difficult as well. But if you can work online, if you can find a way to make your own income, you'll be fine. Um, one of the things, even the, the, I think it's the current mayor actually said, was that Torrebecca is a great place to hide if authorities are looking for you. Um, they're actually, that's very correct. Because what you have here, as it, I was reading the article that said, you have three or four street names alone that with the same name. But then you have like where we are, where this piece of land has been adopted and got houses all through it, in the sense that there's 140 houses, say. Yet, it doesn't exist on Google Maps. This whole area, you know, the street does, don't get me wrong, the street does, but they have no, the context of what's on this side of the road and that side of the road, no idea. No idea what the properties are. So when you try and order things through Amazon or whatever, it doesn't recognize the properties. They're not listed. They don't exist. Um, a lot of this, I would assume, similar to the Philippines, where you have a piece of land that has one address. And until that's all adopted and separated out, it just remains as one address. Because um, obviously, you have to pay for that to happen. And as a developer, manana, manana. Um, it's not something they're going to rush to do because it'll never affect them. Anyway, thanks for watching.